Today, we'll take a look at some weighted averages questions. In all these questions, it's a little hard to identify that they're testing weighted averages or that they can be easily solved using that concept. Now, uh, before we move on, you must check out our weighted averages video. I'll give you the link in the description below. And we'll keep the scale method in mind and we'll keep the formula in mind, which is W1 by W2 is equal to A2 minus A average upon A average minus A1. So let's jump in. Take a look at this official question. Pause the video over here. It discusses some discount of the regular price. So profit loss, discount, a markup, you know, that topic. And um, try to see how you would solve it and see what answer you get. Once you're done, start the video again and then we'll discuss it together. Okay. So, uh, Henry purchased three items during a sale. All right. So, he purchased three items. He received a 20% discount of the regular price of the most expensive item. Well, that makes sense, right? When we say 20% discount of the regular price, when is, on what price is the discount given? The discount is given on the regular sale price, the one that you see on the tag, or we also call it the marked price, right? So, um. Uh, we are offered a 20% discount of the regular price of the most expensive item. He bought three items, right? We are given he bought three items. So let's say this is the most expensive and this is the least expensive. So he got a 20% discount over here. All right. Now, uh, and a 10% discount of the regular price of each of the other two items. So then for the other two items, for both of them, he got a 10% discount each, right? For both of them. Was the total amount of the three discounts? Okay, so now we have a 20% discount, we have a 10% discount, and we are talking about the three discounts together, are they greater than 15% of the sum of the regular prices of the three items? All right. So look, this makes me think of weighted averages. Why? Because we have two discounts. One is a 10% discount. It's fine if it is 10% on two items. Basically, we'll add the regular price of both of them and we get a 10% discount on that price, right? On both together, on both combined. And there is a 20% discount on another regular price. So I would think of my scale over here. Let's say I draw my scale. And I say that there is a 10% discount here and there is a 20% discount. So the overall discount on all the three items will be somewhere in the middle of 10 and 20. So maybe here or here or here or here or here. We don't know. Uh, we need to find out whether the total uh, discount was greater than 15%. So 15% is, of course, right in the middle. So they're asking us whether it was less than 15% or more than 15%, right? Okay. Now let's look at our statement one. The regular price of the most expensive item was $1.50. Look, as we said, the weights, when we're talking about averaging the discount, is what it is the regular price. And why is that? Look, think about it. When we say discount percent, what do we calculate it on? We, cal we say this is discount upon, what is the um, denominator over here? Our regular sale price right regular price or we also call this the tag price or we call this the marked price that is the price that we can see um, displayed right and then discount is given on that displayed price so that is your regular price so since in the denominator we have regular price so our weights are going to be regular price so then the regular price of the most expensive item was $1.50. So that means this 20% discount was calculated on what? On $1.50, which means that we have $1.50 over here. This is the weight of 20%. The 20% was calculated on $1.50. And the regular price of the next most expensive item was $1.10. Okay, so we said that this is our most expensive item. This is the next one. And this is the least expensive item. Now, this we were given is $1.50. And this one we are given is $1.20. So then this one, the lowest one, least expensive, will certainly be $1.20 or low. 
right or less than dollar 20 which means that the weight of the last two items of the two cheapest items will be dollar 40 or less than dollar 40 so this weight will be let's say less than or equal to dollar 40 right so we don't know the exact amount that's all right one thing that we can say from this is that the weight of 10% is less than the weight given to 20% so let's say now when i try to find my average my average will lie let's say somewhere over here it will be further away from 10% than from 20% because 20% is given more weightage let's say if this total price is actually equal to dollar 35 then this distance would be in the ratio the entire distance would be split in the ratio of 50 is to 35 in any case this will be the average and it will be to the right of 15% it will be closer to 20% than to 10% because the weight given to 20% is more than the weight given to 10% so then was the total amount of the three discounts greater than 15% well yes certainly we've got our answer as yes certainly because the weight given to 20% is higher so then the overall discount is closer to 20% and that is why it is more than 15% okay that means this statement alone is sufficient great let's look at statement 2 now the regular price of the least expensive item was dollar 15 so now it is saying that this the lowest price this was dollar 15 actually then the price uh, total price of the two cheapest items was dollar 35 um, but please do remember that over here in statement 2 we are not given that the most expensive item was dollar 50 and the next was dollar 20 right these two figures are not available to us when we are discussing statement 2 we need to erase them out of our mind and now we have the only thing available let's make that diagram once again um taking up the um data given in the question stem so we say that all right this is our 10% and this is our 20% and we have somewhere here is 15% we have to see whether our average is to the right of 15 or left of 15 now all we have is that this is dollar 15 we don't know the weight given to 20% and that is why we cannot say whether the average is here or here etc so then this statement alone is not sufficient we cannot get the answer using statement 2 alone and that is why our answer over here is a take a look at this uh, question now reminds me of sets when diagrams double set matrices etc right so try it out pause the video over here and when you are ready then start it again okay of the 1400 college teachers surveyed so we are serving 1400 college teachers 42% said they considered engaging in research an essential goal how many of the college teachers surveyed were women so you know i'm thinking double set matrices perhaps there is a man woman uh, you know two rows and then there are two columns the ones who consider research essential and the others who don't we we'll look at it no worries okay then in the survey let's look at statement 1 now in the survey 36% of men and 50% of women said that they consider engaging in research activity an essential goal now now i'm thinking weighted averages why is that because i have two groups look weighted averages is what basically if you recall our first most basic example when we talked about let's say there was a group of boys and a group of girls and we talked about something their height weight something so we said that let's say the average of this group is something and the average of this group is something and when we combine them what is the total average the average of both their averages right so whenever we have two groups and then we combine them and talk about their average we are talking about weighted averages in those cases so isn't the same thing uh, here as well now we have a group of men over here 
and we have a group of women over here and we're talking about a certain characteristic of these men and we are saying that 36% of them believe something and we're saying that 50% of these believe something and then when we combine them together we are saying that 42% of them believe it right when we're talking about the total so this is the average of the percentage that consider engaging in research and essential activity, right? So then again, what comes to my mind is that the scale method that we have, right? So I say here that, okay, so here are my men, the 36% is here. Then I have in somewhere over here is my 42% and somewhere over here is my 50%. 42% is the weighted average of 36% and 50%. All right. Now, what will be the weight in, the, in this case? Now, 36% of men consider engaging in research essential. So what is my denominator over here? Now, how do I calculate my 36%? How do I get that? That is the number of men who consider research essential divided by the total number of men. Mm -hmm. And then how do I get my 50%? I say that is the number of women who consider research essential and divided by the total number of women. So what are my weights? The total number of men and the total number of women, they are my weights over here. All right. Um, we'll have, now, what are the weights? Look at this. We know that we see over here that the distance between 36% and 42%, that is 6%. And the distance between 42 and 50% is 8%. So my average is closer to 36%, that is closer to the men than to the women. So my weight, the weight of men upon the weight of women, that is the number of men upon the number of women is going to be in the ratio of 8 upon 6, which is equal to the ratio of 4 by 3. Now, I have got the ratio of the number of men and the number of women. And I know that we have total 1400 college teachers, right? So I say that this means that the total is 1400. The ratio on the ratio scale, we have the number of men and number of women as 4 is to 3. That is on the ratio scale, the total is 7. And this 7 in actual value terms is equal to 1400, which means my multiplier is what? It is 200. It will give me the number of men as well as the number of women. The number of women over here becomes 600. Of course, I don't have to calculate all this. right? The moment I get that this will be the ratio of the number of men is to number of women. The moment this number is achieved, I know that I can get the actual number of women. And I say that the statement one is sufficient alone. So uh, how many of the college teachers surveyed were women? I can answer it using this statement alone. Right? I don't have to calculate the actual answer. All right. Now let's ignore statement one and we'll only look at statement two. So we don't have any of these figures anymore. In the survey, 288 men said that they consider engaging in research activity an essential goal. Okay. So I have now 1400 college teachers total. And 42% of them said they considered engaging in research essential. And 288 men said, said that they consider engaging in research essential. So I can get 42% of 1400 and I'll get the total number of people who consider engaging in research essential. So 288 of them are men and the rest would be women. Now I have got the number of men who consider research essential a number of women who consider research essential but do i have how many of the college teachers surveyed were women do i have the total number of women from that well i don't there is no way i can get the total number of women i only got the number of women who consider research essential 
but I do not get the total number of uh, women. We are not given this number that 50% of women said that they consider research essential, right? This was in statement one. And when we are reviewing statement two, we are not taking this data at all from statement one. So that is why statement two is not sufficient alone. Hence, my answer over here is A as well. Now try this question. Again, it's based on percentages, fixed cost, variable cost. Pause the video over here and then start once you're ready. The Schofield runs a bed and breakfast and incurs a certain cost every month, part of which is fixed and the rest depends on the number of clients. So basically, we're saying that there is fixed cost and there is variable cost, right? His variable cost increased by 10% this month. So the variable cost has increased by 10%. How do we calculate this 10%? We say we obtain that by dividing the increase by the variable cost last month. Okay. By what percent did his overall cost change this month? So now what we're talking about is the overall cost change. We know there is a fixed cost. We know there is a variable cost. There is a change in the variable cost and likely a change in the fixed cost as well. Now, fixed cost doesn't mean that it stays the same every month, right? It just means that no matter how many clients they get, that cost stays the same. So, for example, the rent of the premises, they are a part of your fixed cost. But the cost of food could be a variable cost because if there are more people, then the cost of food will increase. That's okay. Now, um, let's look at statement one. Last month, his fixed cost was four times his variable cost. I'm thinking weighted averages again over here, uh, which I'm sure you would expect now. So um, I have, let's say, the fixed cost and the variable cost. I know that my variable cost increased by 10%. So this went up by 10%. The weight over here will be the various uh, variable cost last month. Mm -hmm. Then I don't know what happened with my fixed cost as of now. Did it increase? Did it decrease? And by what percent? I don't know. But I'm asked to find the overall cost change this month. So then, um, you know, where does the average lie? That is the question. That is what I have to find. Okay. Now we are given that last month his fixed cost was four times his variable cost. So this gives us the ratio of the weights. The weights are now, we know, in the ratio of 4 is to 1, which means that the average will be much closer to the fixed cost that is somewhere over here. So it will divide this distance in the ratio 1 is to 4. All right. So it is going to be much closer to the fixed cost, but we don't know whether fixed cost increased, decreased, or by what percentage. And that is why we cannot say what this average is. We don't have a value for this average as yet. All right. Now let's ignore our statement one and look just at statement two. So now let's say again, I have my fixed cost here and I have my variable cost. This I know is plus 10%. And his fixed cost reduced by 20% this month. So I'm given that this went down by 20%. So the average will lie between minus 20% and plus 10% somewhere there. But where? I don't have the weights for the fixed and the variable costs, right? I need to know how they were related last month because these increases are calculated on the values of last month but I'm not given that data. So then this statement alone is also not sufficient. Both these statements alone are not sufficient. Now we put them together. So we know that fixed cost is minus 20% uh, decrease, that is 20% decrease, and variable cost saw a 10% increase. We also know that last month, the ratio of the fixed cost is to variable cost was four is to one, which means that the average divided this distance into one is to four and that gives us the value of the average do we really need to calculate it 
No, not at all. But if we want to, this distance between F and V is 30, right? From minus 20 to 10, that is a 30% difference, right? We split it into five parts, which means 6% each. And the average is one part ahead of F, which means an additional 6% over here. So the average is minus 14%. So though we didn't have to calculate all this, because the moment we find out the ratio and the uh, weights of both F and the values given to both F and V, we know that we can find the average, but still in any case, this will be our average if we want to calculate it. Hence, together, the two statements are sufficient to give us the answer. And that is why our answer over here is C. Look, none of these questions intuitively look like weighted averages questions. They do not mention the term weighted average or average or whatever. But do realize that whenever we see two different values and then their average or we're putting them together, their total, we should think of whether weighted averages is applicable here or not. Because the moment weighted averages becomes applicable, it becomes extremely simple to just visualize the answer. We don't even have to calculate. We know the things that we need. And the moment you know we see whether they're available or not, we can figure out whether uh, we'll get the answer or not. We don't actually have to calculate the answer, but it will give us whether the data is sufficient or not. Interesting one day. We look at some fun mixtures questions in a few days now.